We're going to start out with a dictation. Remember I told you about dictations about once a week? This one's going to be extremely simple in theory. Very, very simple. It's just going to be 10 English words. They're all one syllable and very, very short. Now, who of you do not know the KK Imbiao? Raise your hand. If you don't know KK Imbiao, please raise your hand. Just hurry up and be honest and, you know, don't tell me later on. Those of you who don't know KK, you need to start learning it because the rest of the class apparently knows it. We're not going to spend as much time teaching it. It will be covered in the book, but not for a while. But we're already going to start having dictations once a week, and we need IPA for that. So do your best. By the way, no eating and drinking during class. Water is OK. Nothing else, just water. Um, so um, make sure that you learn KK. It's going to be actually IPA. IPA has got a lot more symbols. KK is one subset of the IPA, uh, IPA symbols. We're going to be using it for a, uh, for a dictation now. There are going to be 10 items. Everybody get out a sheet of paper, and you're going to hand it in. So if it's a precious notebook and you don't want to tear it out, use a different piece. So a sheet of paper, name in the upper right-hand corner, phonetics, and the date. So your name in English and Chinese. Because we have some people with the same English name. I'm going to read 10 words. And I want you, first of all, everybody paying attention, number your paper 1 through 10. Write the word in English spelling. So it's like a first grade spelling test, very easy. Then put the transcription in KK next to it. And use brackets, please. I know you've learned both this, for example, E. And this, right? Well, this is phonetics, so we're going to use this one. So use brackets, please, and then put your transcription between the brackets. Ten very simple words, but I'm going to tell you something to watch out for. Two things to watch out for are vowels, vowel quality, vowel length, and also listen for final stops. Everybody ready? Watch my mouth whenever I give a dictation because you'll get information from my facial gestures, from my face. They will give you cues. So even if you can't hear me, everybody look. Everybody look. Even if you can't hear me and I go, what sound do you think it is? Could be m or could be b or could be p. So it's by label. So looking at me will help you, help you get the sounds in, the ca in case that you don't hear them that well. It will just give you more information. All right. Number one, I'll say each one twice, and I'll read over the whole list when we're done. Number one, ready? Bat. Bat. OK, look up when you're ready, and then I'll go on to the next word. Two, bid. Bid. If you don't know IPA, uh, this time I won't count it against you, but you will need to learn it really quickly. Number three, but, but. Ready? Number four, beat. Beat. The way you're looking at me makes me think it's harder than you thought. <laughs> That's because the final consonants are unreleased. We'll talk about that another time. Ready? Number five, bet. Bet. Ready? Number six, bead, bead.
Write it in spelling and in KK symbols. We're going to call them IPA symbols from now on. Ready? If you're not ready, shake your head and I'll slow down. Number seven, bed, bed. Ready? Just look up, put your head up when you're ready. Number eight, bud, bud. Ready? Number nine, bit, bit. Ready? Number ten, bad, bad. And we have a bonus sentence. I want you to write out a sentence. You don't have to use the KK symbols this time, the IPA symbols. I just want you to write this sentence down in regular spelling. If you're a former student, you might know the trick behind this, uh, but don't give it away. <laughs> okay. So write down this sentence. Listen, watch. The mother raised her children. The mother raised her children. The mother raised her children. I'm going to read over all of the words in the dictation. Check your work, but don't stare at your paper. Look up at me so you can see my face. It will give you clues. One, bat. Two, bid. Three, butt. Four, beat. Five, bet. Six, Bead. Seven, bed. Eight, bud. Nine, bit. Ten, bad. Bonus sentence. The mother raised her children. Check your work. Make sure that you put something down for all of them. I don't want any blank sheets of, blank sheets of paper. Do your best. Check your work. Name and other information, upper right hand corner. Okay, all set. Now, please, uh, we're going to put the answers on the board, and then we're going to exchange papers. I'll ask some people to put the answers on the board. The rest of you exchange papers. So we're just going to go in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is over here. Eight, nine, ten. I want you to put the answers on the board. So you're ten, and eleven, I want you to write the sentence. Okay, so come to the board, and please, Put them on the board in order. And we're going to correct the work. Each one is 10 points, 5 points for spelling, 5 points for the IPA. Now, remember I warned you on Monday that a lot of people would be getting 20s and 30s and less on the first dictations? Don't worry. This does not count against your final grade. The first ones are usually abysmal. At the beginning, some people get zero because they just don't know how it works. So don't freak out. It's OK. Yeah. But what you should do is learn from every single dictation. You'll learn something new. Your ears will get a little bit more sensitive each time. So don't worry if you made a lot of mistakes. We're just going to learn from it. <clears throat> OK. All right, the first one should be what? It's not bag, it's bat. Yeah. It's bat, like bang chiu the bang. Now, we have two problems here. One is, if I don't release the stops, I didn't say bat. If I said bat, 
Do you think you would have gotten it right? You probably would have gotten it if I said bet, but that's not how we usually say it. These are called unreleased stops, unreleased. In Chinese, it's meo chu zu. Okay, it's zu ai de zu. Okay, chu zu means that's, this is chu ma? Chu diao, okay, have to be sure. Um, Meo chu zu means that we don't have a puff of air at the end. It's not bat. It's bat bie qi. Bie qi jiu shi bu chu zu. It's unreleased. So it's harder to understand out of context. In context, it's not so bad. However, G and T are different in another way. It's not just that you got the wrong place to put your tongue. It's you thought it was voiced when it was voiceless. And that's something we're going to talk about later in the class today. That's an important distinction you should be able to tell even if the consonant itself is not that clear. You couldn't tell if it was a T or a K, but you should be able to tell if it's voiced or not. So listen, excuse me, listen, bat, bat, bat. I'll put, my, uh, put the microphone up to my throat. First my mouth and then my throat. Bat, bad, bat, bad. Did you hear a little way ba at the end? I'm going to put the microphone by my throat and then you'll hear it really clearly. Bat, bad. I'm not throwing up. <laughs> bad. Did you hear it? That's voicing. And I didn't have any voicing at the end of that one. So even if the, the a T or a K would not be so serious. It's really hard to tell. But you should be able to tell voice from voiceless. So that's one of the things we're going to learn from these dictations. If you just learn that theory from the textbook, you probably are not going to get it at all. But being reminded every week by a, a dictation and a grade that you get from it should help you. So the first one is bat. Okay, five points for each, five points for spelling, five points for the IPA. The second one is bid. This is correct. However, do you notice something about the way they wrote the I here? Good. Amanda, do you notice anything funny about this I? Can you see from there? Yes. What's funny? Um, I I okay, Amanda is a native speaker of English from California. She noticed immediately, immediately. So we all notice. <laughs> the point is, we don't write a line on top of I as we write a dot. Now you think that's very ji jiao, but if you wrote a Chinese character with a really long stroke, you'd think that's really strange too, right? Like, then? <laughs> that's pretty weird, right? So this I is weird. In addition, it's going to confuse us because this is also a tone mark. So please fix this immediately. From now on, all of your I's should be dotted. In addition to I, there's another letter to watch out for. J. So everybody fix that. That's very Taiwanese. I know immediately that was a Taiwanese who wrote it. However, it's correct. That's very good. Three, but, but is correct. It's good. Four. Four was beat. And again, we have the problem when the stop is not released, you can't hear it clearly. And I don't blame you for that. I used a microphone, but it's still not that clear. It was actually beat. But this is not a serious mistake. Either this beat or this beat. And the first one is pi beat. OK? Five. Bad. All right, here we have the same problem. Here we have two problems. In this one, it was the consonant. I really said a T, but you heard a G sound. In this one, this is a really typical Taiwan problem. This is one you need to watch out for. So remember when I said that you need to hand in all of your notes on Monday, right? All of your pronunciation corrections all of the mistakes you make on all of, the, all of the dictations, put those into your pronunciation notes that you hand in on Monday. So start making a record. You, can, you need to hand this in on Monday. And this is for your own 
your own use because you will find out very quickly where your weaknesses are and you can fix them quickly when you know it, where they are. Most of them can be fixed quickly. Let's get rid of that funny person here. Okay. Um, so number five wasn't bad. Both the vowel and the consonant are different. The place of articulation is right. However, it was voiceless, so we need a T here. The B is correct. Taiwanese have no problem with that in general. But the vowel is not correct. What vowel should it be? It's eh, like in 直接的接接, And so the symbol for that is a backwards three. Bet. So not bad, it's bet, dadu. All right, number six. Okay, this probably really wasn't clear, but at least it's voiced. That part is correct. And by the way, a lot of you have a habit of making the ng like this. Okay, it's, the line is a little too high, I'll do it again. A lot of you do that, please don't do that. I know some books may have it or some teachers may teach it. But it's not that sound anyway. And I saw me in the nei hang yao guy. All right, this is number six, and number six was xiao zhu zhu bead. Bead. So it's voice, but it was not nasal. And I can tell you why I think you may have thought it was nasal. I said, listen, bead, bead. Do you know why you probably thought it was nasal? Because of the bead. Mm -hmm. May make you think it's nasalization, like bing. But then the air comes out of my nose. But no air came out. It just mens at holong li mian. Bead. So it's not a nasal. But I understand why you might think so. So that's another thing you're going to have to sharpen up your ears on. You have to attune yourself to distinguish between voicing and nasals, orals and nasals. Voiced orals and, well, orals are voiced. OK, so orals and nasals here. So being should be bead. And number seven, bed is perfect. That's beautiful. Bed. That's correct. Number eight, bud. We have the same problem again. The voicing is correct. The vowel is correct. Place of articulation is wrong. This is hua bao bud. And like I said, since it's not released, it is hard to hear clearly. Number nine, bit is correct. Very good. Number 10, bad. That's real bad. You got it right. OK? And number 11, is this correct? How many of you wrote something different from this? If you wrote this, don't raise your hand. But if you wrote something different, raise your hand. Two people, three people, just four people. Anybody else who wrote something different? Good. What did you write? Right. Spell. R-A-C-E-D. -E How about you? Good. R-A-C-E-D. -E How about you? Good. And one more over here? R-A-I-S-E-D. Raises. Ah, OK, that's not right. And in the back? Hi, Uh-huh. Raises. Raises. OK, two of you got it right. Now, Amanda, I, wanna, I said the mother raised her children. Would you ever think it was this meaning? OK, even a native speaker then had problems with it. The mother, the mother raised her children. And that's because context maybe led you astray. The mother raised her children. Now does it still sound like it? The mother raised her children. OK, context is powerful. And it led all, almost all of you astray. Mama han hai zi sai pao. So the correct answer is R-A-C-E-D. Two people got it right. Unless someone else is not telling us and you got it right. Okay?
The mother raised her children. Mama han hai zi sai pao. Now, remember on Monday when I told you that students in Taiwan rely very strongly on context to understand English, rather than listening out for vowels and consonants more. They rely more on, con on context. This is exactly an example of what I was talking about. But in fact, it's sai pao. I have a few more examples like this. So in the future, don't be led astray by context. Context usually gives you the right answer, but sometimes not. Because some things, you know, it, both, maybe two different things would work in the same context and they're very different, okay? So, um, this is just extra credit. So if you got it right, you get an extra 10 points. So count up the number of points. Five points for each spelling, five points for each IPA transcription. 10 points extra if you got the sentence correct. That's extra credit. And then please hand in your work. All right, we're going to move right on to the textbook. We're going to get through hopefully pages one through five in the textbook. And I may stop and go to the web pages because as they talk about things in the text, we've got some supplements on the website. So we'll start on page one of the text. There is a lot of introductory material which may or may not interest you. It interests me because I've been in this field so long and I know the people involved. I know Peter Lattefoget personally and I know, uh, and I know um, Keith Johnson over email basically and Facebook. So um, yeah, I, I know what's sort of been happening over the years in the field and I've used, this is now the, the sixth edition, I've used five of the six editions in my teaching. So for me it's interesting. I think it's good to know about the authors, about Peter Latifoget and about Keith Johnson, who is a really, really outstanding phonetician as well. So we're going to skip over that, read that on your own time, and we're going to start with part one, page one. Remember when you read, first of all, say your name, because that will help me learn your names. Eileen got your pictures, but I haven't had time to study them yet, so say your name slowly. I'll try to learn some of your names. And Read clearly. The camera will be focused on you. I hope we'll be able to pick up your voice okay because I know you'll be looking down. They may ask you to hold your book up or something. It depends on what works well. Remember to read the numbers, like if it's chapter one, read chapter one. I get really detailed about that. <laughs> you'll find out. And the biaoti, the title of the chapter or the section titles, etc. Make sure you read all those things. This is not a race. I would like you to read clearly and correctly. And because you'll be so focused on your reading, you probably will not understand a single word that you read. <laughs> After you're done and while you're reading, I'm going to keep correcting you. I'm going to mention things about pronunciation. I'm going to tell stories. And that's why we go so slow. But take notes on all of that. It's important stuff that's not in the textbook. Because this textbook is written for, first of all, for native English speakers. Second, for a general international audience, not specifically for Chinese speakers. So I can tell you a lot of the things that I have learned through the gifts of my students' errors. All of my students' errors are precious gifts to me because I've learned so much from them. And I want to xiang those precious gifts with you, uh, what I've learned about English through those mistakes. So everybody's set. Page one. Remember the numbers and the titles and things. Let's go. Say your name and go. Uh, my name is Sherry. Uh, chapter one, articulation and acoustics. OK. Just quick corrections. This was not bad. In American, I think in British as well, yeah. There is a U sound before the U. It's not articulation, it's artic Artic And acoustics, everything else is fine. Go ahead. Uh, phonetics is concerned with describing speech. Describing. Now, if you say describing, we do say that a lot in American English. But Amanda, I'm going to ask you now, if somebody is reading a textbook and they say, phonetics is concerned with describing speech. What did she do? We, we are blessed. I don't know if Amanda's going to take the class or not, but having a native speaker of American English is also another blessing. Did you hear her giggle right away? She just found it, thought, it, thought it sounded hilarious. Is that right? Why does it sound so hilarious? Um, it's very casual. I think so. yeah. we, we use the un sound for ing. 
usually on verbs, but for some other words like something, like I've got something to tell you. I've got something. It's not always verbs, but it usually is verbs with the final ing. I'm going now. That's no problem if it's casual speech, but if you're reading a textbook, that's formal speech. So ing pretty much is always pronounced ing, and it's very easy to find in Taiwan Mandarin. 你们的ing-in已经开始合并了, right? Is that right? But if you put another word after it that starts with g, then you will get ing. So, ing guy, everybody say that. Ing guy. All right. Guy can be removed, but ing the negative ing be out there. Ing guy, ing. Ing guy, ing. Ing guy, ing. Ing. That's the ing we need. When you see ing, and you're reading aloud, that's formal reading. Always say ing, never say in. It sounds very funny. Okay. All right. So Amanda would probably giggle again if I read it again. <laughs> All right, but I won't. Let's go on. Can you try it again? It's concerned with? Phonetics is concerned with describing speech. OK. Ing. Ing. Chinese ing. Don't want to English. Because you already have a habit. Describing. Describing. Yeah. Good. Describing. Yeah. Uh, phonetics is concerned with describing speech. Is it OK? No. Uh, it's not. Describe bing. Bing kuai de bing. Bing. Yeah. Describe bing. Uh uh. Do you say bing kuai? Bing kuai. Yeah, that's correct. So don't even think English. Think Chinese. Only Chinese. Describing. Yeah. Describing. There you go. Okay. Very often you'll find that you say it perfectly in Chinese and you say it in a very strange way in English. So all you have to do is think for a second in Chinese. Describe. Wow. <laughs> Describe Bing and it's perfect. Okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, there are many different reasons for wanting to do this. Wanting. Which, uh -huh. Wanting. Uh, wanting ting, ting. wanting uh -huh. to do this. Yeah. Which means that there are many kinds of phoneticisms. All right, we'll need to use this word a lot. Everybody learn it now, write it down. And I don't want to have to correct you 500 times. Listen. Are we okay? Phoneticians. Phoneticians. That's good. But since we're on the topic of fixing pronunciation, I'm going to teach you something called the echo method that I use in my listening and pronunciation classes. And when you are listening and repeating very often, you use your old pronunciation. You're only listening to meaning. You're not really listening to how somebody says something. But if you leave a pause after you hear it, you'll hear an echo in your head. You repeat after the own echo, your own echo in your head, and you will say it really accurately. So let's try phoneticians, and then I want you to don't repeat. I just want you to hear the echo of my voice in your head. Do you understand what I'm saying? So no sound from you but I want you to hear the sound in your brain after I say it. Got it? That's called the echo method. This is called echoic memory. Okay? Phoneticians. I said no sound. Phoneticians. Did you hear my voice? Echo in your head? Everybody hear it? Listen one more time for the echo of my voice in your head. This is not trivial. This is not trivial. This is something that's hugely useful in learning a new language. If you want to learn French, Spanish, Japanese, or Taiwanese, or anything, if you use the echo method, this enables you to internalize the sound and hear it and keep it in your head very accurately. The echo method. Got it? Put this in your notes. This is big. I'm not kidding. And I'm going to put up two echoes, two echoes, that's a good one, two links on the website and on Facebook with links to articles that I wrote about how the echo method works. I wrote a series of articles in Chinese for Shi De. They have this magazine which looks kind of, looks kind of yuzhi, but it actually is really useful stuff. echo method. It will be very useful to you. So this is an assignment. Write it down. I want you to read those two articles on the echo method. This is number six in the series. I'll pass it around. This one is about compound stress. Remember on Monday when I said 
uh, I, taught, I told you about compound stress, compound noun, 复合名词记得吗? Well, there's an article about it in this magazine. It's not online yet, but I have my own copy that I can give you a link for. So have a look at this. This is the format, just so you know about it. So, 作业里面包括两篇,就是上下,分两篇, about the echo method. So listen to the echo once more and then try repeating. This time, no sound. Phoneticians, no sound, okay? Try it again. Phoneticians, everybody heard it? Did you hear the echo? You should have heard it twice. You heard me say it the first time, you heard me say it the second time in your brain, right? If you can't hear it, you need to work on it because everybody has a echoic memory. It only lasts a few seconds, but we can exploit those few seconds to help us learn better. Okay? So this time, I'll say it, you listen to the echo, and then repeat the word. Okay? I'll give you a little signal. Phoneticians. Phoneticians. Good. Try it again. Phoneticians. Phoneticians. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay? Continuing. That's why we go so slow in the textbook. Now you know. Okay. So more in uh, some are interested in hmm? the different. Where is the stress? Um, some are interested. Good. Good. Some are interested in the different sounds that occur in languages. Some are more concerned with phono uh, pathological speech. Very good. Others are trying to help people speak a particular form of English. Still, others are looking for ways to are. make. Are looking. Uh huh. Good. Are looking. Very good. Still others are looking for uh, ways. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what habit, habit is all about. That's what happens with habit. Most of our problems in learning language are not about whether we're able to do something or not. Often we are very able. We just don't do it because it's not a habit. So you're going to find your biggest obstacle is habit. And we heard it right now. She can say it perfectly, but she's got an old habit that... I've just read a book on habit you may be interested in. It's called The Power of Habit. It's a bestseller. I'll put some information up on the website. If I forget, then somebody can remind me. But habits are never forgotten or lost. All we can do is write over the old habit. Just shit, just a overwrite, just like a computer overwrites an old file. So you need to overwrite what you had before. That, that habit will always be in your brain somewhere. But work on overwriting it, and then you can start up a new habit. Go ahead. Still others are looking for ways to make, uh, to make computers talk more intel intelligibly Good. or to get computers to recognize speech. Recognize. Mm -hmm. Recognize speech. For all these purposes. 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 Good. Uh, fun phoneticians. Right. Phoneticians. Have that echo in your brain. Carry a sound file in your brain. It's like a sound file in your brain. If you don't remember, just 静下来 and try to a sound file. Okay? Phoneticians need to find out what people are doing when they are talking and how the speech talking of sound. Pause. Um, oh. Talking is a Okay. Mm -hmm. When they are talking, and how the uh, how the sounds of speech can be described. Very nice. Okay, beautiful reading. Thank you very much. We're gonna gonna clap every time. You know, <laughs> it was just the first day. Let's just find out what we said because we were focusing on pronunciation. We usually don't get much meaning at all when we're paying so much attention, especially when you know I'm paying so much attention to pronunciation. First of all, let's look at the title of the chapter: articulation. To articulate means two parts of a that have a joint, two jointed parts moving, we should say. Okay? That's articulation. Did you know that? So that's articulation. So we're gonna talk about moving parts that are together, held together by a hinge. And in general, it's just translated as fa yin in, in Chinese. So it's just about pronunciation. So articulation is what parts we move in our vocal tract to produce the sounds of language. And acoustics means the study of what? Sound. Sound, right. In physics, it's the study of sound. That was the bell. We're taking a break. 
Um, any questions before we proceed? Some of you were asking about this stuff. One student said, is unreleased chuzu or bu chuzu? Of course, I was talking about released and I just said chuzu. And you had to have to add a bu for un. Unreleased is bu chuzu. Unreleased is, for example, bit, bit. Because I'm holding air and I'm not letting it out. If I say bit, it's a little Okay. Yeah. So bit, it's 全身都紧绷的, because you're holding that air in. That's called unreleased. Because the consonant That's the uh, That's what we mean by unreleased or 不出足. Okay? Any other questions before we continue? Some of you said, gosh, I had a really hard time with this, that, or the other thing. Everybody does. Remember I warned you on Monday. I already warned, warned you. It seems so simple, but when you don't have context, it is not simple, right? Hearing the consonants is hard. Getting the vowels right is especially a big problem in all of East Asia. In Taiwan, the hardest part, I think, or the part that needs the most work in the English spoken of people by people in Taiwan is vowels. 台式英语最大最大的麻烦就是母音母音有一些抓的不准 But we'll fix that in this class if you work at it Yeah, if you pay attention and you work at it and you're motivated, you will fix it Okay, we're going back to our textbook now So we finished hearing number one You may get a new student arrangement because they're finding that maybe to film it's easier to go vertically I don't know what their decision is Because the Tamanai Anpai we may tell you either today or next time. Okay. All right, so we've just only looked at the title, and we've read the first paragraph, but we need to explain it. So articulation, remember, it's pieces that are held together by a movable joint. That's articulation. And that's what happens like here. right? Your jaw moving up and down. That's an articulation. But when we talk about articulation and phonetics, we're just talking about fayin, the way we move things around in our vocal tract to produce language sounds. Acoustics, we're talking about physics. We're learning about sound as a phenomenon. All right, let's look at the first paragraph to make sure we've understood it. What, do, uh, what is phonetics all about? We want to describe speech. And there are many different reasons for wanting to do so. Why would we want to describe human language? What is the purpose? And because there are different reasons for learning or studying phonetics, that means that people do different things with it and that there are different kinds of phoneticians. So for example, some are just interested in knowing the, the, the variety of sounds that appear in human language. So we're familiar with the sounds that occur in Mandarin, say, some of you with Minayu, you may speak, but actually you may not be very familiar with the phonetics of Minayu. We're going to do that later in the course, by the way. Yeah, Mandarin and Minayu. Um, so you may be familiar with English, Mandarin, Minayu to some extent through speaking it, but not so much other languages. Maybe you know a little bit about, say, French or German or Japanese phonetics, but there are so many different kinds of sounds that can occur in the languages of the world. For example, I went to Georgia, the Republic of Georgia, and they use something called ejectives. And they sound like this, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, isn't that fun? So that's an example of a sound that we don't normally use in English or Mandarin. We use them under some circumstances, but it's not part of the language system. So that's, those are exotic sounds. There are other sounds you've probably heard about spoken by the Bushmen tribes of South Africa and also some unrelated languages that borrowed the sounds. And those are clicks. For example, ah, 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 ah. Okay? So there are all kinds of interesting, interesting sounds that occur in the languages of the world. Some people just think that's the most interesting thing in the world. And Peter Ladefogut was one of those. I think I'm one of those, too. I just love to hear about weird sounds. I think it's just interesting. So that's one kind of phonetician. And they do field work. Some are more concerned with pathological speech. What is pathological in Chinese? Bing tai de. So some people have had trouble speaking. For example, they may have a cleft palate. How do you say that in Chinese? 
兔村 is 比较不不礼貌的说法，比较不不 politically correct 的说法。That's the way you say it in the more PC way. Chun e lie. That's right. Chun e lie. That's the tu chun is the old way. We don't say hair lip any longer in English, just like we don't say a lot of other what we consider um, inappropriate things, unflattering things about certain groups of people. We say uh, people. Uh, f okay. So, um, what kind of speech will you hear from people like this? People with a cleft palate. What kind of speech will you hear from people with a cleft palate? Okay, I have a family member who married somebody with a cleft palate. She's very bright, but she happens to have a cleft palate. So, okay, because she cannot form a lot of consonants, that's the way she speaks, and it took a little getting used to. She's very bright. She, she works in computers, but because she has a cleft palate. There's a lot of sounds that she doesn't pronounce the same way most people do in Mandarin. So some people are very interested in pathological speech, speech that is different from standard speech for some medical reason. This is your issue on the mobile yuanyin. Or helping children who are having trouble with speech. Some of them may have be hard of hearing, so they need extra help with speech. So that's another group of phoneticians with a special interest in the field. Others are trying to help people speak. Particular form of English, for example, accent coaches. If you perform in a movie, if you act in a movie, or if you do radio voiceovers, you often want to be able to speak with different accents, either a different accent of English or a funny accent of Mandarin, like 我是美国人的 that kind of speech. You know, foreigners in the media, 就广告有时候会用外国人这种很怪的腔调 right? 通通大部分都不像啊 ，OK. As a foreigner, you know, I always think, ah, 实在不像 But people have this stereotype of how we sound. So you may need to use a certain accent for performance, or because maybe you want to be par more part of a certain group, you want to sound more like them, or you don't want to be marked as a foreigner, as an outsider. So,、uh, for example, if you go to the states. And you find that people are discriminating against you because of a certain accent, either a foreign accent or a different accent of English. Or within the U.S., I have a friend who is a broadcaster from Texas, and he has almost no Texas accent. And do you know why? I think it's pretty obvious why. I, I asked him about it. I can hear his accent in a few words. And the words are e n words like pen. He says pin. I can hear it. That's the one thing he did not fix. I 留点尾巴，露出马脚。But otherwise, he speaks beautiful standard American English. Why would he change? It's not just when he's on the radio. You talk to him in person, and that's the way he talks. Why is that? Anybody? Time for participation. Anybody? We don't have time to waste. Honestly. <laughs> Anybody? Why do you think this guy from Texas? He started out with a Texas accent, a typical Texas accent, and there are more than one Texas accents. Okay. Say it again. Making him like an alien. That's right. In in the northern part of the U.S., we sometimes make fun of people with a southern accent. Now it's not very kind, but it's an emotional reaction, and we all have it. And 不输啊 If you hear that in Chinese, you're also going to react. 你不一定看得看不起他 but you still have a, an emotional reaction, right? 输不输 Uh huh. You have. You're laughing. You have an emotional reaction. So we have emotional reactions to people who speak a little differently from us. Now, we can't help it. Honestly, we can't help it. The emotional reaction is there. You can decide not to express it. You can't 表表达出来，可是那个情绪上的反应是没办法，那个就是有。We can't help that. So he said that when I asked him, you know, why did you change your accent? He said, well, if you had lots of people telling you every day that you're really stupid, you would change too. That's what he told me. Okay, now. Do you think people from the south are stupid, Amanda? No. no, I don't either. I know they're not. 
But when you hear a southern accent, do you have a kind of reaction? Yeah, we, we react. Okay, I'm sorry it's a bad accent. It was just, <laughs> well, that was like a shao guo. Um, we have an emotional reaction. We can't help it. So people are tired of that reaction all the time. We get tired of it. All the time they say, oh, where are you from? In our own country. People like that will sometimes go to a dialect coach and get help and try to learn the more standard variety. It doesn't mean they replace their accent. They'll learn another variety and they'll use it when it's appropriate. They'll keep their accent for when they go home. Because if you use the northern accent in Texas, you'll sound out of place as well. People will think you're showing off or that you look down on your own people or whatever it is. So I'm just talking about another kind of phonetician. People who know phonetics really well may use it to help other people learn a new accent. That's another thing we can do with phonetics. And still others are looking for ways to make computers talk more intelligibly. Have, you, have any of you tried? Siri. Sorry? Siri, there we go. How many of you have Siri? Just one. OK, some of you have Siri. How does Siri do? How does she sound? Uh, she didn't know what I'm talking about. Oh, that's a problem with understanding. But how does she sound when she talks? Weird. She sounds a little weird? Yeah. OK, not too natural. So that is really tough. To make computers understand and to make computers speak like people is really difficult. We can get it to a certain level where it's understandable, but it will make mistakes when it's listening, and it will sound stiff and unnatural when it's speaking. It's gotten very good now, so much better than it used to. We'll maybe play some examples in another class. It's gotten much better. But what do you think is the hardest part of getting a computer to sound natural when it's quote unquote speaking? What do you think is the hardest part? Do you think it's vowels, consonants? What do you think it is? Intonation. There you go. It's intonation. Basically, it's about timing. The hardest part that we cannot teach computers really well. We still have not succeeded. Maybe we will in the future, but I have my doubts. It's timing. That is the hardest thing. And all humans are extremely sensitive to timing. Now, you may think, well, you know, I'm having trouble with English sounds. But the thing is, if you sit down and listen and you train your ears, you will find you get it right away. Because we are just born very sensitive to teeny, teeny, tiny differences in timing. Because that's the way languages work. Language events take place in milliseconds. 我们是算什么? That's one one thousandth of a second. 一秒的千分之一, so we are, as humans, are very sensitive to timing differences. Computers are not good at learning this. They're, they don't have that sensitivity. It has too many rules. OK, so. For all these purposes, phoneticians need to find out what people are doing when they are talking and how the sounds of speech can be described. Now, we spent a lot of time on the first paragraph, but so we know what we're doing. Pay attention to chapter titles. I had an experience once. Pay attention to this. Turn to chapter 6, please. It's on page 136. Can somebody, uh, who's our reader now, number 2? Uh, just read the title of chapter 6. Thank you. And by the way, I'm going to warn you, the R gets the Zhong Yin Zan Ali. No. That's what everybody does in Taiwan. That's why I asked you to fix it before you say it wrong. It's stressed on which syllable? The first. Got it? The first syllable. Mechanisms. Got it? Mechanisms. OK. Can you read the title, please? Airstream mechanism. <laughs> you just did what I told you not to do. OK, and then I screech. <laughs> you see why I screech? That's what I do when you don't remember stuff. And it's really hard to remember all this stuff. There's a lot. But try again. Stress is on the first syllable. Mechanisms. You got it. Yeah. Uh, uh, airstream mechanisms and the uh, phonation types. OK, that's correct, except remember I told you about compound stress? Listen, this is how it should be read. Airstream mechanisms. Those are two nouns, so we don't stress mechanisms. This article that I'm passing around, 
airstream mechanisms and phonation types. But your vowels and consonants were very nice. All right, the reason I said let's look at this title is because in another class many years ago, we finished the whole chapter. We were just about to take the test for the chapter. And I said, any questions? A student raised her hand and she said, excuse me, what are airstream mechanisms and what are phonation types? The whole chapter is about these two things. We finished the chapter and she said, what are airstream mechanisms and what are phonation types? You're not reacting. Why are you, some of you are, hee hee ha ha. Why is that funny? It's supposed to be funny? Because after you've studied a whole chapter's worth of airstream mechanisms and phonation types, you should know what they are. That problem comes from not paying attention to the chapter titles. So this is, this is something you should put in your notes. Pay attention to the chapter titles. Because sometimes you finish the whole chapter and you still don't know what the title means. It's really, really important. And section titles, those will help you too. Pay attention, they give you a lot of information. They will help you find things that you probably didn't quite understand in that section. So always pay attention to section and chapter titles. All right, any questions before we move on? Now, we see another section title here. Let's analyze the parts of speech first. What do we have here? The first word is a. What part of speech is it? It's a noun, good. The second word is a. Therefore, class, what is this? This is a compound noun. Therefore, what are we not going to stress? That's right. All right. Now, OK, Amanda, can you help us again? All right. I'm going to say something. Watch Amanda's face and see if she smiles or giggles or whatever she does. Her first reaction should be honest, because we can't suppress that easily. OK, if I'm reading and I say, speech production instead of speech production, speech production. It sounds strange. Does it sound a little too excited? Yeah. There we go. Too excited. Hmm? Right. <laughs> that's exactly it. And that's why I love having English native speakers here, because students often don't believe me. <laughs> Just so that I can you know, have a lot of theories that I can make money from publishing books. No, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. This is not a lucrative field, at least not so far. No. But if I have a young native speaker, somebody your age, who just suddenly reacts, then you believe me. You know that they have an emotional reaction. You know there's something there. So if we say, speech production, like we just said, yay, how exciting, isn't that great? I mean, gosh, it's just a, it's just a section title, big deal. <laughs> OK? So how about bian li shang dian? That's my usual example. How do we say that? And by the way, it's not. T at the end, it's C-E at the end, so get it right. Bianishangdian in English. Convenience store. So don't say convenience store. 7-Eleven. <gasps> <Seven> -Eleven. <laughs> OK, all right. So you really do sound way too excited. It's, it just throws us off. And whenever you see a, a native speaker, you're losing something. They're not going to hear everything you say after that. So be careful. Yeah, OK, go. Speech production. Mm, OK. I think you try. But we need to work on how do we say something so that it sounds like it's unstressed? How do we de-stress something? How do we pronounce something with no stress? That's how I should say it. I'm groping for words here. Very good. It's exactly what it is. Write that down. Unstressed syllables are pronounced with a low, even pitch. That's what unstressed means in English. Low, even pitch, deep hing diao. So when I say it's not stressed, lower your voice and say it with a very flat tone. So this is how it should sound. Everybody use the echo now. Don't repeat it. Just listen to the echo. Speech production. Speech production. Speech production. Everybody heard the echo? OK, try. OK, and go ahead. And your name? Did you give us your name? There, Doris. Okay. And by the way, in American English, we don't usually say Doris, we say Dor. Doris. Doris. Try it. Doris. And it's a schwa. Doris. Right here. Doris. That's it. Not do. 
Dor. There we go, Doris. Okay, now don't mind if I correct your pronunciation of your own name. I know some students freak out, they get so embarrassed. But this is phonetics class, so that's what we do here. Okay, go ahead. Speech production. Beautiful. Oh, that was so perfect. <laughs> Wasn't it? Wasn't that absolutely perfect? Zero, zero mistakes. Good, okay, yeah. Good. So you see my reaction, and then you could see that Amanda had it too. We go, yeah, how change it? That's it, that's it, that's it. You get so excited. It's genuine. Yeah, okay. We will begin by describing how speech sounds are made. Most of them are the result of movements of the tone and the lips. All right, stop here for a minute. Two things, we're going to correct pronunciation, and then we're going to think before we move on so we don't read without understanding. First of all, shuthou, everybody needs to work on this, because remember I said last class when I got all mixed up that it, it gets mixed up with tan, tongue, and tone. Those three words get mixed up in Taiwan. They get totally mixed up. Tan, yi duen, diang tian bang. Tang, shuthou. Tone, yin diao. Tang, or sheng diao. Tan, tang, tone. Now, we're not going to take time to fix them, because this is a really tough problem in Taiwan English. Un and ng are very difficult for Taiwanese, for many Taiwanese, not all, but for many. Like interesting and interesting. So, tan yi duen shi un dian de un se jian hui ding sang qu. Everybody, tan. Tan. That's yi duen dong xi, like a ton of coal. Shi tao is tang, and that's easy. Yi wei guo yu de tang ai de tang. 可是嘴巴开大一点，那个母音还会稍微开一点，不是疼，是疼，疼疼，就是国语的母音变一下就可以了。疼，Beautiful, that's it. And the third one is tone. 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 Yeah,欧洲的欧后面是n点的n, not tone. 不可以有n，不可以有肮脏的肮在后面. Once more, listen. Don't say it. Listen to the echo. I'll say it a few times. Tone. No, don't talk, just listen now. Listen to the echo in your head. Tone. 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 This time you try it after the echo. Tone. Tone. There we go. So let's try all three. No echo this time. Just repeat. Tun. Tung. Tone. Tone. Totally different meanings. And that reminds me of another pair of words that constantly are mixed up by Taiwanese, and that's sore and sour. Because in Mandarin, they are both suan. Like, 我家的柠檬,我的水很酸. And, 哎呀,我的手好酸. Those are suan, right? But in English, they're similar, but totally different, actually. 很酸, 酸痛的酸 is sore. 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 My arm is sore. My arm is sore. My arm is sore. My water is sour. My water is sour. There we go. Sore, sour. Tun, tongue, tone. All right. Write those down because those are really mixed up a lot. I hear even people with very good English mixing them up. So one reason I stopped this was because tongue, I don't want you to say tone or tun or something funny. It's tongue. Tongue, I the tongue, because it's Ah, tongue, tongue. And the second one is lips is a short i, bu zi, yi, zi, i. Everyone, lips. 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 All right. So we're going to describe how speech sounds are made. And most of them use two kinds of movement, one or, one or both. One is the tongue, and two is the lips. So when we're describing sounds, these are the two things we're going to be talking about most. There are other things, but these are used most often when we are describing the sounds of language, the tongue and the lips. And according to what I've read, the tongue is the 最厉害,最灵活的一个肌肉在你的整个身体上面, especially us ladies, right? Right? Our tongues are especially active. Well, that's the theory. I've read that men talk just as much as women, actually. So, yeah, somebody's nodding over there, a female, of course. Okay, so the most flexible I think the 最厉害的那个肌肉 is our tongue and all of our body in its movements. The 最, it's the most delicate and precise in its movement in our whole body. It's the tongue. 
Okay, and the lips. Continue. We can think of these movements as gestures forming particularly a、uh, particular sounds. Particular. Particular、Good. sounds.、Mm -hmm. We can convey information by gestures of our hands. Of、uh, this is of. This is a little word that a lot of people pronounce of. Gestures of our hands. How does that sound to you, Amanda? Gestures of our hands. It sounds like over, right? But it's O F. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll misunderstand. Over. We heard is over. Yeah. It should be of. Of. And this is how we write it. It's usually unstressed, so it's a schwa and a v of. Okay. Gestures of of. Don't say over of. Both are wrong. Of of. Now, when I say right and wrong, some dialects maybe have certain pronunciations. When I say right and wrong, it's relative to general American English, the kind that I speak and that Amanda speaks. All right. So some varieties may have certain pronunciations. For example, how do you say S A Y S? Okay. A lot of my former students have it right. <laughs> Good for you. Okay. How do you pronounce it? Okay. If somebody says says. She says so. She's making a face. Thank you. That's exactly what I need. She's making a face. So made hope. However, in some dialects of British English, they say says. So when I say that's wrong, that's wrong. Fix it. It's wrong relative to standard American or general American. Some dialects do say says. Now, any case, in any case, I'm saying of. It's such a common, important word. Let's pronounce it right. Of. Go on. Uh, by gestures of our hands that people can see, but in making speech that people can hear, humans have found a. Here, okay. I'm gonna have to teach you another thing. That's why this takes so long. Again, this is called a continuation rise. If you are not finished with an idea, with a phrase, with a sentence, we have something at the end called a continuation rise. My former students know it as the little song. Tang ne so ge, ne so xiao ge. The little song. You start high, you go down, and you come up. And I will illustrate it here. So, if you're not finished, your voice should always go up at the end. Pretty much always. If you're not finished with something, you want people to wait for something else that's coming. You need a continuation rise. So, for example, <clears throat> we can convey information. I went up by gestures of our hands. Hands. That's got to stress. Hands. Did I go high? Hands. That people can see. Now we're done. We go down. We have a falling intonation at the end of a sentence, at the end of a complete idea. But before that is finished, we need a continuation rise. And 不是单纯的上升 You go to the stressed word. You wait. Pay attention. 偏语的最后一个重音会特别高，要很高很低，微微上升 That's what we do. This stuff is all described in the Shuda article, so I will give you the links and please read them carefully. It will save you a lot of, save us a lot of time in class. So、uh, let's go back to it.、Um, we can convey information by gestures of our hands, hands that people can see. We can take a pause there and go down, or we could go up. Can see, but in making speech that people can hear, hear. Humans have found a marvelously efficient way to impart information. Okay, so if you're not finished, use this little intonation here, the continuation rise. Go ahead. The gestures of the town of, and of, of. the gestures of the town and the lips are made audible so that they can be heard and recognized. Made.、Uh, what was the word again? Are made are made audible. Audible, yeah. Oh, some people might say it that way, but in American, it's ah,、uh, audible, audible. It sounds like a 广告，因为有卖有声书叫 audible.com. Okay, audible. So, so that they can be heard and recognized. Very nice, beautiful reading. Thank you very much. Okay, but the things that I pointed out are all important, and I point them out. I take so much time, so I hope that you learn them, so that we can save time. That you get it right the first time, and in the process, your English is sounding more and more native-like.、Um, now, we're going to start this whole book by talking about how we make sounds.、Uh, we're going to talk about the articulations of sounds. Most of them are done by the movements of tongue and lips, and we can think of these movements as gestures forming particular sounds. 就是发出
特定的一些音，的一些动作 ，OK? And we can convey information by gestures of our hands that people can see. If you're deaf, you'll probably learn sign language. So people can see those gestures. But we can hear these gestures. In making speech that people can hear, humans have found a marvelous, marvelously efficient way to impart information. Why do we say it's efficient? Why is using movements of your lips and tongue and other organs an efficient way to speak? For one thing, if I'm going to use sign language, I have to put the microphone down, right? OK, of course you don't need it because you're deaf. But the point is, you have to use your hands, and your hands are not free to do something else if you're using your hands to speak. That's one disadvantage. So you can be using your hands doing something else and speak at the same time, multitask, right? And we'll find out later how efficient it is, but you can just kind of take his word for it right now. And the gestures of the tongue and lips are made audible. These are things When we think of gestures, we think of sight. But these are gestures that we can hear so that we can understand. All right. Good. Next reader. Microphone. Yeah. Making speech gestures audible involves... Speech gestures. Why do we say it that way? It's a compound noun. Do you find that this is getting to be kind of... What? Repetitive? <laughs> we hear it over and over again. What does it tell you? It tells you that almost zero people in Taiwan know about compound stress. Almost zero. So you are now part of an elite group who knows about compound noun stress. It's very elite because few people know it. But when you are reading, try to read ahead. Okay? Try again. Making speech gestures audible involves pushing air out of the lungs while producing a noise in the throat or mouth. These basic noises are changed by the actions of the tongue and the lips. Tongue. By the tongue and uh, the lips. Try it again. By the tongue and the lips. It's almost right. The vowel is not quite right. Tongue. By the tongue and the lips. Almost right. That's good <laughs> enough. Yeah. Uh, later, we will study how the tongue and the lips make about 25 different gestures to form the sounds of English. We can see uh, some of these gestures by looking at an X-ray movie, which you can watch on the CD that accompanies this book. Figure 1.1 shows a series of frames from an X-ray movie of the phrase on top of, uh, on top of his deck. In this sequence of 12 frames, one in every four frames of the movie, the tongue has been outlined to make it clearer. The lettering to the right of the frame shows very roughly, the sounds being produced. The individual frames in the figure shows that the tongue and the lips move rapidly from one position to another. To appreciate how rapidly the gestures are being made, however, you should watch the movie on the CD. Oh, it's still downloading. OK. If we can get it to work, we will try it. If we can't, we'll have to wait until next class. But this is what you see, although you see it moving very quickly in an x-ray film. And how do you think they got these, these pictures? As far as I know, they're from the 1950s, before we knew what. These were taken with x-rays. And if you're x-raying somebody the whole time that you're filming them, it's not just Shun Jian, it's just not, not just a snapshot. You're taking a film like they're filming us right now, going on and on for quite a period of time, with an x-ray. What's going to happen? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So these were patients that were filmed with a special kind of a camera that could x-ray them. And most of them died of cancer. We didn't know then how dangerous it was. So we still have those films. They're very, very zheng gui, because we're never, ever going to be able to make films like that again. We're not going to kill people to get these films. In fact, there are other ways to see inside the head. We don't really need to do that. But these are still very precious, these ones that people died for, basically, OK? OK, so these are x-ray films of people talking. And you can see the parts that we're going to learn about shortly and how they move around in our vocal tract. 
Um, okay, continue. Demonstration 1.1 plays the sounds and shows the movements involved in the phrase on top of his deck. Even in this phrase, spoken at an uh, spoken at a normal speed, the tongue is moving quickly. Tang. The tongue is moving quickly. Yeah, there you got it. Okay, good. The tongue is moving quickly. <laughs> The tongue is there moving go. quickly. Good. Good. Yeah. The okay. actions of the tongue, tongue. are <laughs> the action of the tongue uh -huh. are among the fastest and most precise physical movements that people can make. Fastest. It sounds like fastest. 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 All right. And that's what we were saying. I said the tongue is 最灵活的一个肌肉. And then here we see it in the textbook. Okay. Um, the software we need to see this particular sentence is not working, but this is the same thing. This is about what you would see. Very good. Next reader, please. Name and read. Producing any sound. Any sound. Any sound requires energy. Just a little more energy in your voice, okay? okay. Good. In nearly all speech sounds, the basic source of power is the respiratory system. All right, this is another word we need a lot. Respiratory, I think, is one way to say it in British English, but in American, it's respiratory. Respiratory. Everybody, listen. Let's use the echo again. Respiratory. Go. Respiratory. Echo. Wait for the echo. Wait. Let's do it again. Respiratory. Go. Respiratory. Good. All right, that, that uh in there is very short. Respiratory. They go, uh, I'm quiet. And one. Okay? The basic source of power is the respiratory system pushing air out of the lungs. All right, this sentence is very important. In fact, I have to warn you every single sentence in this book is important. You know, some textbooks have a lot of fei hua, right? But not this one. Yeah. <laughs> every single sentence. So pay attention to every sentence to understand what they really want to say with it because it's important to understanding phonetics. Every, every kind of motion requires some source of energy. We've got electricity. We power some things by water. We can power things by wind. Okay, and that's what we're getting to right now. What powers speech? What is the source of energy for speech? Feng Li, it's wind power from our lungs. We inhale air in our lungs, and then when we let it out, we use that energy to drive the speech mechanisms. So air is what drives speech. Air is the source of energy, air from our lungs. We cut it off at different points. We'll talk about that in chapter 6. But basically, air from the lungs, that's what powers speech. Okay? Try to talk while breathing in in instead of out. Good. Breathing in instead of out. Okay, fine. B G Yao Xie. In and out. They're they're opposites, right? Breathing Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing is in and out. What do we stress in a phrase like this? We stress the part that is contrasted, you unstressed, deeping down. Often it's completely unstressed. So while breathing in instead of out. Okay, go on. You will find that you can do it, but it is much harder than talking when breathing out. All right. Now, when we speak, does the air go out? Or does it come in? When we speak, what is the air doing? Is it coming out from our lungs or is it going in? Because we do both. Inhale, exhale. So when we're speaking, what is the air doing? Is it going out or coming in? It's going out. It's going out. So when I'm speaking now, I've got a store of air here and I'm slowly letting some of it out to speak to you. Could we talk by reversing it, by sucking air in and talking instead of speaking while we're breathing out? Could we do that? What did the textbook just say? Read it over. What does it say? 
you will find that you can do it, but it is much. Uh huh. Okay. Let's try it now. We're going to try this sentence. Producing any sound requires energy. Let's use that sound as an example. This is the normal way we say it. Producing any sound requires energy. That's breathing out. Let's try saying that sentence breathing in. Go ahead. Good. Breathing. Well done. Go ahead. Breathe. Breathing. That's perfect. Can you pass the microphone to her? She's doing a great job. Thank you. Your name, please? Um, Anne. It's Anne. Producing any. Oh. It's hard, but you're doing Turn it perfectly. On. Try to finish the sentence. <laughs> Just, it's only five words. Producing any sound requires that. Beautiful. Okay, you just about did it. Everybody try it. Okay? Producing any sound requires energy. I can only do five words. I'm at my limit because it's so inefficient. And how does it sound? <laughs> Sounds like it's from a horror movie, right? <laughs> Something terrible has happened or is going to happen very soon, but it's not now. Okay, don't worry. So. Producing any sound requires energy. Everybody try to do it. Don't cheat. No cheating. Producing any sound requires energy. Actually, you can get it. You can get good at it if you practice. <laughs> if you, just like anything else. Okay. Okay, because I forget the times, because I'm just back from after a year away from teaching, I've forgotten the routine. This is as far as we've gotten. So next time we're going to start talking about voice and voiceless sounds, exactly the kind of problems, at least that was part of the problems, that we had with the dictation.